everyone? Can you hear me well? Perfect. Okay, my name is Miriam Gonzalez. I'm here with Andres Ortiz to present when will Mexico will be navigable on OSM. Okay, so first we have to understand what happened in Mexico today and what happened in Mexico also before. So before 2011, Mexico uh, government considered all the information as closed data. Uh, so if any citizen of any organization wanted to request anything, they should uh, pay for it sometimes or even was never received. So starting September 20th, 2011, Mexico and other seven countries, they founded the OGP. The OGP is the uh, Open Government uh, Partnership. Those countries were uh, Brazil, USA, Philippines, Indonesia, South Africa, United Kingdom, and of course also Mexico. The main goal of this partnership was having transparent governments in the one they could be involved, civil society, and of course all the government entities. So this also will ensure the collaboration with, with all the parties in a, in a nation. So after just a couple of years, we can see now that 65 countries also belong to this partnership, starting at some years before, only eight, as I mentioned before. Okay, so the next slide is, uh, we have to understand what is INEGI. First, also we have to understand how to pronounce it correctly. So <laughs> how you say it in English will be in -E he This is the acronym of National Institute of Statistics and Geography. Uh, at that time, in 1983, it was founded, and it really belonged to the government institutions. And, of course, they didn't have any decision power at that time, and they depend also in all the government authorities' decisions. 20 years after, in uh, 2008, there was a big event. INEGI became an autonomous entity. With this uh, autonomy, they were capable to take their own decisions, and of course, innovation start being part of all the initiatives they start taking in the country. So, in 2012, only four years after INEGI became an autonomous institution, the objective was really clear. They were not only an organization whose main goal was to sell information. The main goal was to reach the larger amount of people in the one they could share all the information already gathered by the government and paid by the citizens' taxes. So another really important change was to change the internal culture because at that time, because they were selling the information, people was thinking that giving the information for free was become was leading to be the information useless and also meaningless. So they have at that time 45 documentation centers who were working as sales offices and they have to migrate to be actually promotion centers to promote the information of the country. Uh, at that time also, uh, they started doing a big project for digitalizing all the information they had. They had more than 10,000 publications and people was working in, in the in as well, they were thinking that all these new uh, policies was going to be taking uh, a, a wrong effect in the organization because they were afraid that they will be having too many requests for printed data and also free CDs with all the statistics information, but actually the effect was the opposite. As you can see in this graphic, they were uh, giving at that time around 5,000 printed maps, but when the digitalization started taking place, they started registering around 55,000 downloads every month of digital information. Okay, so also in the same year, INEGI started working on doing some changes in the terms of usage, but it was really complicated. The law of rights didn't allow to use the information that was already free in the same organizations, so they have to do extra work and doing also parallel contracts in order to take advantage of that information. So it was not possible to do at that time a project with OSM. In 2014, uh, the government of Mexico uh, released a decree in the one all government institutions, they needed to release the data as open. So at that time, already Neji was half of the way ahead because they already start working years in advance for this uh, new policy. And also they start being as an example for the rest of the institutions in the government of Mexico. 
Uh, finally, in November 2014, INEGI released uh, flexible terms of usage, and now thanks to that, we are capable for start doing the analysis and also evaluation of the data and see where OSM data is better and also where INEGI data uh, needs also to be adapted or need to be corrected. Giving back, uh, INEGI also is very excited about what's happening right now in the country and seeing all this project, uh, they want to also uh, hear from us to see what can we do, uh, what can we provide as updates for their own data sets. Uh, they already have something named participative cartography in the one any citizens can reach them and can let them know where the data is not accurate. And now with the help also of them, uh, they are going to start studying what can be done to review the architecture they have right now, currently working for the organism, and see what can be done in the future, and everything is right now under evaluation. Okay, I will give right now the microphone to Andres to continue uh, the import project uh, part. Hi, good morning. Uh, well, why importing uh, INEGI data? Uh, that's uh, one of the main questions we made ourselves at, this, at the beginning of this year. And the answer is the, that because all of that data could improve greatly OSM maps. That's the simple answer. I will, I will show you just 10 examples of the, of the difference between OSM and INEGI data, just uh, for you to get an idea of how the data from the government could improve whatever is currently uh, in OSM. So I will show you, um, for example, this is the OSM map for a small city in Mexico, and this is the INEGI data. You can see that some uh, federal roads, in federal uh, interstate highways in red, are not available in OSM, as well as some of the residential roads uh, within the city. The same happens for another different city, chosen randomly uh, in Mexico. Again, the INEGI data completes quite well for the residential roads and some parts of the, of the federal highways. Here's a dramatic example of residential roads, especially because some, some places are really, really detailed in the, in the INEGI data. Here you can see also the same addition of um, residential roads in all of the examples that I'm showing you. You can see the, the quality and the richness of the data from the government. Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to talk about the Inegi data sets. The first one, or the most important one, uh, to have like the groundwork for doing all the following imports is the MGN dataset or the boundaries dataset. It's the National Geostatistical Framework of Mexico, and it's uh, formed by the states, by the municipalities, which, which is another of the official administrative levels in Mexico, and uh, the geostatistical areas. Also the localities in all of Mexico in point form, and the island territory. Uh, the current state of the municipalities' uh, boundaries in OSM is not, not is not that good, to be to be honest. Uh, you can see here what's the current state of the of the uh, of the boundary limits coverage in OSM, and what we expect to have after the the boundaries import. After the the boundaries import, we will see an improvement of the municipality coverage. And um, that's like the first project that we want to, to start with uh, uh, for importing data to OSM. Well, that seems easy, right? But there are other levels below the municipality level and we need to make room for them. So it's uh, kind of difficult and that's why we're starting just with the municipalities. Here comes the boundaries import. We already setting up the um, wiki page for the import project on the community. We're working with the community to um, s uh, define the, the guidelines, the documentation, and to have everything on track before even sending the mail to the uh, imports request mailing list. And after that, we, I'm uh, sorry, I forgot one important point. In OSM, there are currently only 4,000 points in Mexico that are addressable. From government data, we have 
about 25 million in urban areas and 2 million in rural areas. This is a huge improvement from government data for what uh, you could consider or can consider to be geocodable addresses. So this is really the big one. Raw data sets. Well, we analyzed the boundaries and now I will talk about the raw data sets. The most important one is the, well, not the most important one, the, 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 most, uh, the one that connects the interstate highways and the trail paths of the country. It's called the National Road Data Set, or RNC as we call it. The other da um, data set that is also really important is the urban highways and road vector data set. We call it internally CBU, uh, for, for its name in Spanish because it's really long. And the difference is that this one only aggregates at the state level. Uh, each state has its own um, data set and the files are, are separated by, by state. And the vector information of city block localities and plus the exterior numbers um, layer. Uh, we call it for short the IBLA and the importance of, of this uh, data set is that it contains the exterior numbers of most of the, of the urban localities in Mexico. So uh, an issue that we see sometimes with geocoding is that you don't have the number of the, the door number of the place you want to go, and this, this data set includes, includes that important feature. Uh, taking a glimpse of the quality of the data sets, uh, you can clearly see that the RNC is uh, much better than the others, especially because of the way it was released. It's based on the standard, on an ISO standard GDF 5.0 or intelligent transport system. So it should be allowed for routing out of the box when put on, on any um, GIS um, database. That's the difference from the CPU and the EF IBLA, which are bigger data sets. They are much more detailed, but they don't have the quality of the RNC, right? Um, there's a lot of data, but uh, that's not enough to, to say if um, Will it route? We need to go deeper on the data. So we analyzed the three data sets to check for those, uh, for those issues that they might have. And the first one we checked was road connectivity. Uh, we found a lot of dangling, ed dangling ends on, on the IBLA. Actually, um, we loaded the data set in a, in a post-GIS topology extension and found a lot of road disconnectivity. That's a huge issue. We cannot work with this data set just out of the box and put it for an import. We need uh, to fix it up and make a lot of uh, cleanup on this data set. Even if it's the biggest one, it has a lot of issues. And the problem is that it's not limited to one city. We just put, for example, this, this uh, picture you're seeing is just for one city, but this repeats in practically every city in the data set. That's a huge issue, and we work around for some fixes with the post-GIS schema. I will skip that because it's too detailed, but there are some solutions over there. The issue number two, overlapping data. So the issue here is that we found that for a same segment or a same edge in the IBLA and the CPU data sets, there are a lot of overlapping edges um, that they don't have any, like we don't find any reason for them to be there, but it's a lot. And in the IBLA and the CBU, we found the number of cases to be really high. Um, here's an example of what happens. You can see the road in, in the segment in, in red, the edge. It will be overlapped by several segments, smaller chunks, uh, in the same data set. So you will see a first overlap. The second one, I don't know if it's clear on the screen because it, it's, it's the one limited on the, on the circle. The third, four, and five overlaps over the same edge. This is also a huge quality issue that needs to be fixed uh, for not having a lot of duplicates uh, before importing. So the same happens with highways. We see the original highway in red, and it will be overlapped several times. You can see one overlap, 
two, three overlaps. <laughs> the same issue with, uh, sorry, the another issue with identical overlapping edges. And actually, this is the one that uh, we saw uh, more repetitions or more cases in those data sets. This is the most common case. An overlapping edge exactly the same on the same path. And I mean, you may say, you may say uh, if you are um, working on this field, that doesn't mean that they are the same or referring the same road, right? Well, we analyze for that. We check if the value of the attributes was the same to see if uh, actually they were referring to different roles. Maybe they were some, actually not road over road, but maybe a, 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 an overpass or something like that, a, a second level of a road. So we check for that. We check that the road name, that the road type, and the directional flow of the segment was exactly the same, and found that for a huge number of cases, that was exactly referring to the same road. So 70%, about 70% of the um, cases in the IBLA data set, this is an issue, a big issue. Same happens for the CPU. Since the CPU has a lot of, uh, of attributes, uh, I, I don't show the whole table, but um, you can see that the top row, in the case of all the, all the attributes, are exactly the same. Uh, shows a lower percentage, but it's still a big one, 40%. So in conclusion, the IBLA and the CPU are really good data sets in the sense that they are huge. They include the street and house numbers, and that's really, really useful information but they have quality issues. They don't have, uh, they weren't released in, with, in mind uh, for routing. Uh, that's different from the RNC. That uh, from the beginning, uh, from its creation, was thought about being released, compliant enough to be used as a routing uh, road network. And that seems to be, uh, that holds true after our analysis. I would like to talk about uh, the work in progress uh, we have. Since there's a lot of issues with the data sets and it's really difficult to just put the data out there and let the community fix them because it will take a long time. We're making an algorithm, a, a, a program to take to, two layers, a base layer. In this case, for example, we can take all, whatever is in the OSM as a base layer and an enhancing layer. So the enhancing layer might be, for example, one of the Inehi data sets, and we conflate both. After the conflation, we will see a validation of the, of the roads. We will see that a lot of the issues are fixed on the geometries and the topology of the, of the road, and it's, the most important one is that we are taking this on, as an automated process. So what we want to do with this is uh, set up the ground for showing this to, to the community and let them choose after we do the conflation for them. Instead of uh, waiting for the user to do it manually, we do it uh, on an automated way and present the, the results to the user. This is a much um, more efficient way of showing the changes to the to the user and to the community, and it might be the key to updating or importing a lot of the government data sets in an amount of time shorter than it will take. For example, for what it take in, in what it took in U.S. for importing the Tiger data. So what we want is to avoid the the, the pitfalls that we saw when importing uh, Tiger. It's really uh, a lot of work to import government data because they have huge issues. Um, so we wanted to avoid that. We wanted to analyze whatever the go Mexican government has released and put it out there and show the community what's the difference and also the tools necessary for, for fixing them. I think I uh, ended soon, so I will take any questions.
text will be ripped. Wait for it. No, come on. Any place we can try, we can track the, track the progress of the import. Yeah, on the wiki page of the, the the official wiki page of OSM, we have the page for the boundaries import and the page for the road network import. We divided uh, the import processes in two: first the boundaries, and after that the road network, since they are really different uh, perspectives of importing data, and we will just uh, maybe we'll, we will use the grab enhancer for the raw data, then um, we, we kept them separate. Sorry, what, what was your question? Um, I couldn't say because we don't have like uh, really a lot of, uh, of the users registering like the, their details in the OSM pages. We gather, um, for example, in meetings in Mexico, like 20 people, like really enthusiastic about uh, the OSM. Like they have the technical knowledge, they've been in the editing pages, but uh, I wouldn't say it is as big as in, as in the United States or in other parts of the world. It's not a big uh, community. Yeah. Uh we don't have the exact numbers, but when we post also the project in the forums and also in some other sites, we saw around 100, 150 views. So maybe those are the people active in the community in Mexico. Probably there is more people registered, but it's not as active, or maybe they do edits randomly. So I think around 100 people, 150 will be the ones active in the community. Uh, no, actually, uh, what TenetApp will do is the cleanup process and the guidance, the technical guidance, because the community is not really too involved. We are trying to, to, to gather the community together and just give the data to them. So as part of the community and as part of TenetApp, we will try to make uh, bold and Smith. So the first one is to just take the data uh, fix it or make any cleanup necessary, put the, the files on there, and then guide the community to make the import. Oh, so you won't have, like, uh, data? Uh, maybe as an employee from, from TenLab, I will be uploading the data. If no one from the community, like, raises their hand to do it, right now we've seen one or two people from the community wanting to do it. Um, we are trying to communicate communicate with them, and they might be the ones uploading it. But right now, that will be like the like the approach to do the import. Yeah. We don't want to just automatically like, all right, these are the changes and then automatically conflate it. So the idea with the application would be to identify what the differences are between OSM and then the specific INIGI data set and then provide them with the changes and they can evaluate whether or not, okay, these changes are sound. So we're still figuring out how we would like to deploy it, but definitely, you know, based on the geographies, so, uh, the different boundary data sets that Entrace has provided. So it's, it's something that we have work in progress. But uh, 
I don't think it'd be a problem to just organize all the work based on the geography and then serve it up by their know, tasking manager or another platform. So I don't, I don't see a problem, which I think it's just getting participants. Yeah. Will the participants be able to make changes to the conflation after it's been conflated, or is it more like a yay-nay kind of thing? Uh, the question was if the participants will be able to make changes after the conflation, right? Yeah, we were planning to use the, the, both the graph enhancer and the task manager to show the users where are the places that need more updates and maybe show them both versions. What is without the Inegi data and what will be with the Inegi data because we cannot just uh, assume that the government data is better. There are places that uh, are complementary. So we want the users to see both and based on what they know about the, the uh, what they know on the on, on the real street on the ground, then take action after that. Any other question? We get this into OSM and we can, and we wind up fixing that, there will be like the best data set of Mexico ever out there in the open. And I think that's very, very interesting for the Mexican government and the Mexican people. So my, my question is like, so how do you work with INEGI, like with the Mexican Statistical Institute that curates the data? How do you work with them to like sort of benefit from like what's going on right now? Yeah. Uh, they are really open about listening what's happening with their data. Uh, actually, people right now in INEGI, they are really innovative people and they want to see ahead of the curve. So, uh, as I mentioned also in the presentation, they have right now one tool named Participative Cartography. In the one, anybody can raise their hands, log in, and say what uh, the citizens is, is finding regarding one specific situation in one neighborhood, in one street. So they are waiting for us to give some comments. And then when we met, met them, it's like we met them in Condatos last year in October. We said that we want to do this project and they have been uh, having meetings with us because they want to hear also the, the version of what is in, in the people doing all these projects with OSM. So they are really open about listening what is there that they could improve for the benefit of everyone in Mexico. Just, just adding uh, one more thing about that. They are really interested in receiving updates and errors of uh, whatever data is from Mexico. So they want to just take those errors and then see where they have to send their, their people to sense the, the fields. Because they, they cannot just put OSM data on, on their data sets. They need to send people to the, to the places. And I think that will be all. Thank, thanks a lot.